Hi, I'm Davis and I'm a park guide here at Andersonville National Historic Site. We are standing here in Andersonville National Cemetery. Behind me are the graves of Civil War soldiers who perished here during Camp Sumter Military Prison's operation. Today we will be discussing Andersonville's connection with African Americans and surrounding area. During Camp Sumter's operation, the stockade was constructed by the labor of enslaved people. Around 100 African American soldiers were held during the prison's operation, and after the war, African Americans continued to work and live around Andersonville Cemetery by helping to honor and bury those Civil War soldiers who were buried here in the National Cemetery. After the war, Andersonville will become a place for African Americans to express their political rights, as well as their connection to freedom and emancipation. This can be seen through their participation in Emancipation Day celebrations and later Decoration Day and Memorial Day celebrations. Many African Americans in the surrounding area expressed their new political rights and left the area at once. However, many stayed to finish the harvest, and some also continued to help to bury and honor the dead here at Andersonville National Cemetery. This can be seen with the work they did with James Moore's expedition with the U.S. Army, which came to the site in July of 1865 after Camp Sumter had closed. Although working in the cemetery provided for lower, lower wages than in places such as the Liverpool Cotton Company, work in the cemetery appealed to African Americans because it provided them with work outside of a plantation setting and allowed them to remain close to the Freedmen School. In 1866, Camp Sumter's graveyard became the Provisional National Cemetery from 1867 to 1868. Around a, from around 100 places, around 851 bodies were reinterred here from various locations, including Macon, Americas, Sandersville, and Irwinton. This work was done by seven black workers and three white workers. And in 1868, the workforce topped about 250 workers, with many of these workers also attending the nearby Freedmen School. Around 1868, Benjamin Dykes began evicting African American tenants living on the site, and the federal government will not employ large numbers of African Americans until the U.S. Army takes control of the property in 1910. By this point, Andersonville will come, become a symbol of freedom as well as a place of pilgrimage as opposed to a place to live and work for African Americans in the surrounding area.